Hello everyone and welcome to the 8th round analysis of the Grand Swiss in Riga, Latvia. Today I played against international master Jovanka Huska and uh, I've actually had the privilege of recently working with her. I'm a huge fan of the work she does with Norway Chess and Norway Television with David Howell and to be honest it was such an honour playing against her. So don't worry, uh, this one won't take long. Let's jump into it. <laughs> so I was lucky enough to play white pieces and I was pretty confident going into the game, although I did spend a huge amount of time preparing for something I didn't even get in the game. So I think after the first few moves, we ended up getting something completely different. And uh, yeah, I just had to go on my own and, and come up with ideas. So uh, let's, let's begin. So the first move I played was e4, since I'm an e4 player, e4 gang gang. <laughs> and uh, Javanka usually plays the Karu Khan against e4. And here we just have a normal Karu Khan. And in this position, I believe there are a number of things that black can do. Black can go knight to d7, bishop to f5, and knight to f6. I'm not too clued up on other variations, but I do know that there are probably a few others. But these are the main ones. And uh, Jovanka decided to play knight to f6, and I took it, and then just continued with knight f3. Maybe bishop e2 was a little too passive after the game. Um, she was giving me sort of um, ideas that I could use in future. Uh, games using this variation so I do know I could have done better in the opening bishop e2 possibly a little too passive I was just trying to avoid the pin and get my king safe probably here I could have gone with a simple c3 uh, bishop to d3 and I know uh, this is very similar to the game between Irene Sukhanda and uh, Maria Mozichuk so bishop d3 and possibly even bishop to e3 and queen d2 trying to long castle could be a good idea in future. So let's see what happened. Um, bishop e2 castles. And I short castled as well. Knight d7. And here I felt very comfortable just playing c4. Queen c2, of course, queen c2 was just avoiding uh, the idea of pushing the pawn, playing knight f6 and knight to e4, so um, she had to redirect her knight to f8, and I just, I played very normal developing moves here, and here yeah, I just centralized my rooks, and the reason I played bishop to f1 was to just stop any future sort of attacks on my pawn on h3, um, but somehow... I'm not too sure what happened and I need to switch the engine on. I was so tempted to do that right after my game. But I know here we could have played something different. I was very happy to see c5. And I felt like this was a pass pawn that definitely had potential. I think I got tired around this time. It was about an hour and a half. Probably a little bit more. Hour 45 minutes into our game. Maybe even nearing two hours. So... Here's where I got a little bit tired, and that's a bad excuse. <laughs> Don't use that excuse. Maybe, um, okay, that's definitely not possible. I was thinking about g4, um, just to try and get the bishop to g2, redirecting my bishop. I was also considering a move like bishop to d2, uh, trying to trade rooks and maybe get something out of there. But I knew maybe bishop e4 would be played, um... I'm not even too worried about this move, thinking about it now. Maybe I can just play bishop back to e2 and we could repeat. <laughs> but that didn't happen. I played b4. Very, very brave move. b4 brave. And I ended up taking and now, even after queen a3, yes, I was defending the rank. But it wasn't enough here. I just wanted to trade rooks. Maybe g3 was a little bit too over exciting uh, over excited idea that i had was just playing bishop to g2 and king to h2 trying to consolidate and maybe trade rooks right after that but after h5 i really felt too comfortable in this position 
I didn't have to take. I really didn't. Probably here, even in this position, I can just play h4. And after h5, I don't take. I play something like um, literally anything's okay here. Knight h2. Because knight h2 takes, takes, and my queen is defending. Takes, takes, and maybe there's this. But I don't think it's like... Oh, maybe it is a huge cause of concern. Here. And I lose the knight. So maybe that's something to worry about. But I think this also helps... Maybe there's a future bishop b8, queen c7, and attack down here. But I cause a lot of these problems for myself. And it's something I preach as well when I coach. Never move pawns on the side that you're weakest. And on the king side, I felt like I was slightly weaker. And perhaps I should have redirected my energy towards the queen side instead. I did say the king side. I did. I'm tired. It's been a long day. <laughs> so we continue. Just to show you my game, of course, queen to f5 and I felt here's where the pressure really, really made me feel uncomfortable. I took probably not a good idea to take in that position. Maybe I should just leave the bishops and bring my queen in, play queen c3 maybe. But even this, I feel like it's already, I'm at a huge disadvantage. And f4. And uh, the next few moves are pretty... Horrible to take a look at, but this is where it all ended pretty much. So yeah, 35 move game. It lasted three hours. I was happy with uh, the duration. Maybe not so happy with my play, just because I felt like in a position like this, yes, I may be worse off even before this. Maybe black is a little bit better, but I felt like I caused a lot of the problems that I had later on on my own. Like, I just beat myself at this game here. So maybe there were other things I could have tried instead. And yeah, I'm just happy to be able to switch the engine on uh, right after this. So there are three more games left. Tomorrow I am facing... Who am I facing? Hmm. I'm facing a young lady from Kazakhstan. She's 16 years old, and I'm actually really excited for the game. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for your support and your love and everything. And big kisses, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye!